Listen, don't say I didn't buy the first present for your first offspring. With the love and anticipation, oh. Uncle Jacques. Oh, my naughty Uncle Jacques. Honey. Darling, Laura. It's Mother Goose. Oh, darling, look at these illustrations. Oh, Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, it's been years. Listen. One day, Little Red Riding Hood was walking through the forest, taking a basket of goodies to her grandmother's house. And suddenly, from behind the bush, stepped the wicked wolf. Ted. Ted. about giants and eggs made of gold that was back when i was six years old got me loose please mother goose i'm a big boy now and there's no excuse for coming loose mother goose mother goose to go go i read about snow white and red riding hood I forgot those stories like a grown man should. But those nursery rhymes got a hold on me. I'm losing my mind. I gotta get free. Got me loose, please. Mother Goose, I'm a big boy now. There's no excuse to cut me loose. Mother Goose, Mother Goose, a go, go. on one hand, Mother Goose on the other. I'm right in the middle and I'm starting to smother. I love my love so, but what can you do when Mother Goose or Go-Go's got a hold on you? Cut me loose, please. Mother Goose, I want to be free. Can't you see? I got no time. Just a question. 
whack Get on my back Let me off your hook Get back in your book I wanna say Please go away Mother Goose Go, go mm, Mother Goose Go, go Where is Mr. Philippe? He's never here when I want him He's up in his suite With his niece, Margie Oh, oh Uncle Jacques, I can't think anymore Everything was so perfect. You loaned us your suite. I don't know why this should happen. And in your hotel. Well, many wedding nights have been spent here, but I must admit that this is the first time that a groom has fainted. <laughs> Mr. Philippe here. I'm waiting for you, Jacques, dear. I'll just be a few minutes more. I'm expecting a very important call. Uh, Please, phone me later, will you? Margie, don't worry. Ted is getting a thorough physical. And Dr. Mattel will tell us what ails him. Uh, Mr. Philip here. Oh, you have Dr. Mattel. Good, put him on. Oh, good morning, Doctor. How is the groom? Ah, uh, good morning, Mr. Philippe. Mr. Hastings' only ailment seems to be that bump on his head. Tell your niece I'm sending her healthy husband back to the hotel. Bonjour, Lucille. Oh. Don't touch me. So ah. Frank is in 302 has been asking for you at the switchboard. And that blonde up in 508. Oh. She's threatening to throw herself off the terrace. And uh, the little one down at the cigar counter. Cynthia. She wants you to come instantly and check the temperature in her humidor. Saint Clair, I don't know how I could run this hotel without you. And now, if I may, I would like to uh, call upon you to do a special mission for me, a special task. All you have to do is ask, Mon Capitaine. Mon Capitaine? Uh, Mon Capitaine. That's better. Saint Clair, I, uh, I am very worried about Margie's husband. Dr. Martel says that he's in good health, but who knows? You know, he might black out again. So, without him knowing it, could you please keep a good eye on him? Mr. Philippe, on my honor, I promise to do my best and keep Margie's husband closely observed. Thank you. More copy, Tim. Carry on. I think psychiatrists are important, especially for some of the dinglings that keep these telephones tied up. You need a psychiatrist. Oh, come on. Why don't you put your thumb in your ear and go bowling? You can't talk to me that way. I'm a club woman. Do you have an inferiority complex? No, I don't. Well, you ought to, because you're definitely inferior. Joe Pine, I think you're nuts. I what? You can go home now. Your cage is clean. Two-way radio, Joe Pine. Good morning, what's on your mind? What have you got against psychiatrists, Joe? I have nothing against head shrinkers. I just object to treating their patients for nothing. I've been paying my psychiatrist right along. Are you still taking treatment? No, I'm happy to say that I've definitely been cured. Cured of what? I used to think I was Richard Burton. Well, that's great. Why don't you call Liz Taylor and give her the good news? Two-way radio, Joe Pine. Good morning, what's your beef? Hello, Joe. I just heard you talking about psychiatrists. Can you tell me how to find a good one? You people can sure get hung up on one topic, but if you're really serious, lady, let your fingers do the walking through the yellow pages. You'll find plenty of them there. physically perfectly normal, but for no apparent reason I took a dive. I think I'm a mental case, doctor. Mr. Hastings, I'm not accustomed to strangers bursting in here without an appointment, expecting instant analysis. Listen, we've got to move fast. This is the second day of my honeymoon and I haven't even shaken my wife's hand yet. 
sleep. Sit down, Mr. Hastings. That's better. You will help me to approach your problem clinically. Perhaps we can determine just which terrible disease you're suffering from. This is the first time in my life that I've ever been in an intimate situation with a female that I... I haven't been able to hold my own. Exactly when did you black out? When the wicked wolf said, where are you going with that basket of goodies, Little Red Riding Hood? Oh, no, no. I mean, what were you doing at the time? Oh. We were in each other's arms. I was kissing her on the neck. And she started reading to me from this kid's book. And, and suddenly... Perhaps there is some connection between that innocent little storybook and the bump on your head. Let's try something. What's that? Just a little something to relax you. A harmless psychedelic drug. It reduces inhibitions to shreds. But I don't have any inhibitions. Then what's the harm? You should be feeling wonderful. Excellent. Now listen. Tell me about Little Red Riding Hood. I can see it all. There's Little Red taking her Saturday night bath, and, and there's Granny knitting like crazy, making herself a pair of hip huggers. And, and now Little Red wants the soap. And Granny's giving it to her. Wow, what a hairy soap dish. something weird about Granny. Grandma, what big ears you have. Would you believe the Green Hornet? Hmm, and your eyes are kind of big, too. And would you believe uh, Little Orphan Annie? Grandma sure needs braces. Wow, that's not Grandma. That's the wolf. Oh, poor Red. Help! Help! The wolf! The wolf! Don't worry, Red! I'm coming! I'll save you! <laughs> Mr. Hastings! Mr. Hastings, wake up! Yes, Red. Are you all right? Oh, excuse me, doctor. Now tell me about Red and the wolf. I mean the relationship between Margie and Jacques. He's her uncle. Oh, you'd laugh if you could see the way he behaves toward her. Jacques's like a mother hen with Margie. But I wouldn't trust him with any other attractive female. Sounds very interesting. Okay, where do we go from here? Very simple. You get Uncle Jacques and Margie over here, and we'll all sit down and talk this thing out. Oh, that's great. That's great. Just see that, Uncle Jacques, Margie, meet my head shrinker. I couldn't tell them I'm seeing a psychiatrist or my marriage would be over before it started. But sometimes a patient's problems are easily solved if the doctor can observe the others who affect him. And I suppose I could postpone my vacation. I know a great, I know a great vacation resort. Swimming, tennis, golf.
Mr. Philip here. Yeah? I'm waiting for you, Jacques, dear. Uh, call me later. I have to check the temperature of Cynthia's humidor. Uh, Mr. Philippe. Oh, uh. Mr. Philippe. Uh, not now, St. Clair. I have some, uh, some urgent business. Mr. Philippe, I, uh, uh, I... Nothing can be more important than my uh, urgent business. Mr. Philippe, this is an emergency. I have documented evidence. Thank you, you are always interrupting me. You have missed a very important connection. Ah! <laughs> timing than Bob Hope. We'd love to join you at the pool. Mm-hmm. A few minutes. Bye. No. No, Uncle Jacques. We're not doing anything. It's nothing important, really. Uh, we'd love to go swimming. After all, swimming is so much more fun than... Oh, darling. I'd much rather be here alone with you. Well, it's just that Uncle Jacques has been a darling to us. And, well, we can't be rude to him. He wouldn't understand. At a time like this, I could be rude to the President of the United States, and he'd understand. Hi there, Uncle Jacques. Ah, Ted, my boy. Good to see you looking well. <laughs> Where's Margie? You know how women are. Last minute makeup repair. Ted, don't you think the new fountain looks um, Wonderful from this angle. It's uh, very interesting. Hmm. March.
Dora Bird is screaming also. You want to go shopping? Oh, I can't wait to get into that party. Mr. Philippe! That's a good idea. Yeah. Don't be bashful. Go ahead, kiss Mr. her. Mr. Philippe! Oh, where'd you come from? Why? St. Clair, are you all right? Oh, I'm so upset. Be calm, St. Clair, be calm. Be calm. I'm just trying to give you some private information. You have to keep till I get back to the office. Meanwhile, let the hotel go to pieces. Do. Well, I suppose I'd better go and see what he wants. If you need anything, please feel free to use my bungalow. It's right here. Have I told you lately you're my favorite girl? to a dry place. Hastings, if it hadn't been for you, my husband would have drowned. Oh, I saw him fall. It looked like he tripped over something. Darling, darling, what happened? You had that same look on your face. Mrs. Hastings, he may be in shock. You should let him rest. Oh, a sip of brandy would be good for him. No, I have something that will relax him. Would you hand me my bag? registered nurse. Don't worry about a thing. I'll take care of your husband. Do you feel better now? If I felt any better, I'd be illegal. What was the last thing you thought of before you blacked out? Margie's luscious lips. No. Concentrate. Right after that. Snow white. The bleach that bleaches bright. Of course. The advertisement in the magazine. Tell me about snow.
mirror, mirror on the wall. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Yes, what is it? Where have you been? Well, I have other customers, you know. I am the queen. Yes, your majesty. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? Just a minute, I'll have to check. Well? Your outfit is divine. Never mind that. Oh, excuse me. Uh, you are the fairest. <laughs> oh, good. You excuse me, please. The tabulator's going crazy. Mirror, mirror. Cut that out. How many times have I told you not to touch that button? Well, I can't wait around all day. What did you find out? Well, I have some bad news for you. What? That Snow White is the fairest of them all. Snow White? Impossible. I just left her down at the cottage of the Seven Dwarfs. I gave her a poisoned apple and she fell dead at my feet. Poor thing. When was that? Oh, just now. I just got back in the house. Well, somebody came along and revived her. Revived her? Impossible. Would I lie to you? Who revived her? Uh, the handsome prince. I don't believe it. Well. <laughs> oh, why, Snow? This kind of apple a day won't keep the doctor away. Well, I don't know what you're driving at. Well, if it hadn't been for this nice gentleman here... Well? Really? I'm the one who should be offended. You come barging in here with a young man you don't even take the trouble to introduce. And then you start accusing me of goodness knows what. And right in my own castle. You should be downstairs cleaning the moat. That's what you should be doing. And furthermore... I can't thank you enough. No, Snow, don't. Mr. Hastings. Well? I looked into the mirror. I had fur. Fur? Yes, all over my body. And a tail. And my face. E Ah, St. Clair. Oh, it's you. I am sorry I couldn't talk to you before. What was it you were trying to tell me? Never you mind. But, St. Clair, this time I promise I will listen. What is it? It's all the same to me, Mr. Philippe. It's no concern of mine if you want to let the whole hotel go to rack and ruin. It certainly would, St. Clair, without your tireless devotion to duty. Ah, the pressures. Ah, only if there were 28 hours in each day. Now, what was it, Sinclair, that uh, you were trying to tell me, huh? Well, are you sure you have the time? Yes, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Well, what is it? First of all, take your niece. She's such a sweet and lovely girl, but her husband is simply a savage, and I'm sure she's been hoodwinked into this honeymoon. Anyway, Ted is carrying on with a hussy right down the hall, on the very same floor, mind you, and he brought her here, <laughs> and is keeping your niece in one room, and that scarlet woman in another. Thank you, that's splendid. Heaven only knows what your poor niece will do. I'm sure he's arranging an assignation. 
we're on the trail of a furry monster. And when we find it... Uh, where is this uh, furry monster? Smokey the Bear. Tim, you sure you're all right? Mrs. Hastings, your husband will be just fine. I've administered the prescribed treatment. Baby, look, I know I gave you a fright, but we sure were lucky to have a nurse close by, huh? Well, you are a marvel, Miss Richards. Um, do you have any suggestions for my husband's activities this evening? <laughs> service here. We're starving. Then turn right. Thank you. Oh, uh, something big just came up. But I'm waiting for you, Jacques, dear. Uh, I'll be right back, huh? Thank you. Oh, uh, forgive my impertinence, but uh, aren't you Miss Richards? Yes. How did you know? Uh, my niece, Margie, told me that her husband, Ted, was rescued today in the swimming pool by a lovely creature who, uh, who actually answered the description. Uh, my name is Jacques Philippe, and uh, I am the owner of this hotel. Oh, yes, Monsieur Philippe. I've uh, heard about you. And where, may I ask, is the world's most beautiful nurse going? Well, I was just trying to uh, make up my mind about dinner. Hmm. May I make a proposition? Proposition? <laughs> I guess that's not the right word. <laughs> Hardly. I mean, uh, I meant... Uh, a suggestion. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Well, sometimes my English gets the better of me. <laughs> <laughs> or you get the better of it. <laughs> Mr. Philippe, I have something important to tell you. Good now, thank you. Can't you see? I'm busy. Mr. Philippe, there's been an accident. Marge and Ted. What? Margie? What happened? Is she hurt? <laughs> Ted had another one of his fainting spells, and Margie and I helped get him up to the suite. Oh, it gave me a spasm. Well, that's one too many. I'm going to get another doctor. Oh, no. No time for that. I'm a registered nurse, remember? I certainly won't let you get up. Now, that was the third time I saw you freeze, then conk out. But I feel fine You're now. You're staying right where you are until we get an expert's advice. Margie? Oh, Uncle Jacques in here. Oh, Uncle Jacques. Oh, well, Miss Richards, I didn't recognize you with your clothes on. What happened this time? It was like a nightmare. We started kissing, and then he fainted. There's nothing to get excited about. We were watching the show at the drive-in movie. Just watching the show? Well, we are married. Almost. Amour, amour. The newlyweds necking at the drive-in theater, watching the show. After a while, we were the show. What have I done wrong? Is it me or is it him? Uncle Jacques, what kind of marriage is this? Now, come on, Margie, now. We must not jump to conclusions. Baby, please. I'm fine. I'm fine. Look at me. I'm fine. Now, come on. Give me a kiss. I want to see you unravel again. Uncle Jacques, please take me someplace where I can figure things out. This is 
is a hell of a honeymoon. Margie, it cannot be that bad. Oh, I'll be all right. What is it? You wouldn't believe it. Uncle Jacques, you're French. Have you had any trouble with women? All my life. Oh, I mean... Have you had any trouble making love? What? I'm sorry, Uncle Jacques, but you're the only Frenchman I ever met. It is a pity, you know. If you were 20 years older, if I were 20 years younger, but then you would uh, be too old for me. I'm going back to Ted. You tell him I never want to see him again. And I don't blame Margie. You know what happens every time I take her in my arms? I collapse! I have all the warmth and charm of the blob! Shouting isn't going to help! It helps! I'm sorry. I am so upset. I can't even think straight. Well, well. I see the patient has uh, fully recovered. Well, Jacques, how's Margie? Very upset. She says she never wants to see you again. If I lose her... Has it occurred to you that uh, Margie might expect a little uh, more of you? You've got to do something dramatic. Something... Oh, well, I'm certain Monsieur Philippe, with his experience, can guide you. Uh, well, uh... I'll answer it. Yes? I'm waiting for you, Jacques, dear. If you cannot wait for me, start without me, for heaven's sakes. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. There, there once was a lady who locked herself in her suite. Where was it? In Bordeaux. In the chateau. On the third floor. Margie! 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 Margie, where are you? Come out! Come out here, I'm coming up after you. Come on, baby, don't play hard to get. You don't love me. Just let me in and I'll love you like you've never been loved before. Mm. He must have a harem, the beast. You make me feel like a married wallflower. Margie, I love you. Now, I've thought everything out. And there's so much I've got to explain to you. There's nothing to explain. Now, I've diagnosed your case. You're suffering from an allergy. Me. Look, I'm suffering, all right. Baby, I want you so bad, it's driving me batty. Ted, is that true? Is it true? Is it true? Just let me take you in my arms again. Everything will be all right. Who do you think you are, son? Jack and the Beanstalk? <laughs> It was a nasty spill, but he's lucky. The bush broke his fall. Margie is not so lucky, huh? It's becoming clear to me that uh, our groom is sick. He seems to be, uh, how do you call it, disturbed. Well, I must go up and see Margie now. Oh, Uncle Jacques, I have to go to Ted. You are not going anywhere. It is time you and I had a serious talk. Oh, no, but he's lying there. He may be hurt. The only place where he's hurting it in his uh, libido. Now, don't worry. 
I saw the whole thing and he's in good hands. Mr. Hastings, Mr. Hastings, speak to me. Three, five, four, five. How could a husband be so dumb? This is no time for a serious talk. I should be with Ted. He needs me. What would be the worst thing for you to do? Listen, I have been adding things up, and one and one does not equal two in this case. Well, I don't need a lesson in new math, Uncle Jacques. I just want to know what's wrong with Ted. Well, I feel that our Ted belongs to that uh, special group of men who are... Well, who cannot relate naturally to women. Yes? I'm waiting for you, Jacques, dear. This is not the time to interrupt me with your nonsense. And that idiot had to go and yell, Jack and the Beanstalk. Is there a fairy monster in Jack and the Beanstalk? No, there's a giant ogre. And, and a that. magic chicken, too. And they're all in your subconscious. You've got to find a way to outwit your subconscious. But how? I'll get him drunk. First, Little Red Riding Hood, now Jack and the Beanstalk. I don't understand. No, but that's just it. If I get him drunk enough, then maybe I can find out what he's really thinking. I have seen uh, lambs act like lions under the influence. But darling, the slightest wrong word can be dangerous. Above all, do not make any reference to his... Uh... Mother Goose stories. Mother Goose stories. This honeymoon is turning into a pretty grim fairy tale. I don't think I could go through another one of those children's story binges. Binges? I wonder. Mr. Hastings, I don't normally suggest this. I want you to let the beast in you run wild. Let your mind roll on. Put a tiger in your think tank. like this? Oh, the nerve! The gall! The stamina of that man! You and Margie are going on a binge tonight, and you're going to get sloshed. Sloshed? Stoned, juiced, gassed! Joe Pine here, what's your beef? Oh, look, lady, I'm taking my wife to dinner. This is my night off. I don't have any time for telephone calls. Look, call me tomorrow at the radio station. 
Look, lady, I don't care if your combat boots are too tight. I'm not speaking on the phone anymore tonight. Of slugs, you'd be dangerous. How? How do I know where he is? Call James Bond. Better yet, call Batman. It's for you. Jacques here. Yeah? I'm waiting for you, Jacques, dear. Uh -huh. Chaga chiga, but a chino raka ni taka. Let's get out of here. Mm, no, you're not ready. Stand here all night? 
That man makes me so nervous. Uh, look, sweetie, while you're waiting for Mr. Philippe, why don't you change into something a little more, uh, comfortable? Hold my booze as good as anybody. Oh, at last it's all right. I don't have to worry about fairy tales. Fairy tales? Goodbye, Goldilocks. Hello, heaven. The newlyweds must be right now, huh? Lost in each other's arms. Marilyn, you are a very exciting woman. Thank you, Jacques. You know that uh, why not for an accident we might never have met? It's almost as if it were planned. I have the, uh, the strangest feeling that we were destined to meet. And I'm very happy that we did, Jacques. Marilyn? With you, I could uh, surpass my wildest dreams. Oh, Jacques. Charming place nearby where they serve delicious coffee. Would you like to go? It is getting very late, monsieur. Very well, mademoiselle. It is time we start back for the hotel. It is such a wonderful night for romance, isn't it? And to think that uh, Ted and Margie are back together again. They could never have done it without your help. 
Thank you very much. Shall I uh, come up and see if everything is all right? That would be... Miss Philippe? Miss Philippe, I've been waiting for you. Uh, no, sir, Claire. But I have a full report. Good morning. Oh, Jacques, you gentlemen obviously have business to discuss. So uh, I'll say good night. And now that we're alone, I can speak freely. What can I? You have tested my patience for the last time. One more silly interruption from you and you're fired. Uh... his head. I know. A little bit of the tail of the dog that wagged me. Yes, I'd like to speak to Miss Marilyn Richards. Who well, this is Mr. Hastings, is yes, it? Yes, this is Mr. Hastings. I'd like to speak to Miss Richards. Please, and make it snappy. Well, yes, sir. I'll, I'll connect you to Miss Richards in 1209. Hi, old Mr. buddy. Mr. Hastings, Doc. you sound awful. Yeah, <laughs> I got a frog in my throat. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, I'm going to drown it. Hey, but don't go away, old buddy, Doc. Cause I gotta tell you how my life got messed up by Goldilocks. Whew. That's the funniest looking cell spot I ever saw. Mr. Hastings, what happened? I just invented a seltzer bottle that squirts Bluish smoke. Of course, the atomizer. Now, Mr. Hastings, listen carefully. When I snap my fingers, you will wake up. You were telling me about Goldilocks. You see, there were beef trees. Uh, three bees, uh, three beards, uh, bears, and and this sun worshiper was in the house in the forest, house in the forest, teasing their threat, uh, testing their beds. She was stake out, uh, flaked out on Betty Bear's baby, baby bear's bed. Her name, uh, her name, uh, Oli Rocks, uh, Rocky Locks, uh, Broken Box, Moldy Socks. Oh. You can call me Gold. Talk it over in the morning when you've had a chance to sober up a bit. Good night, Mr. Hastings.
later. This is an emergency. All right. Now let me see. We've got a mother goose book, a strange girl oddly dressed, a furry monster. And a guy that acts like a six-year-old every time he tries to make love to his wife. Now, calm down. Tell me. Tell me about when you were six. Oh, we're not going to need that. Just relax. Get comfortable. And this time, watch the metronome. Going back, back, back. Going back, back. You're going back, back. When you were a little boy. to little boys who read things like that? Do you? They turn into horrible monsters with fangs and fur and a long, ugly tail. Here's what you should read, Teddy. Mother Goose will never let you down. clear now. Your mother meant well, but she'd planted a time bomb in your head when you were six. You might have carried on for years without that bomb ever going off. And all it took was to be in an intimate situation and come face to face with Mother Goose, and I'd go boom. That's right. Then I'm cured. I'm cured. Oh, now, uh, wait a minute. You know the cause of your illness, but... Uh, that doesn't mean you're cured. I feel great. I feel like a new man. I'm going to go and get Margie, and I'm going to... No, you're not. No. There's only one way to find out if you are cured. Huh? Well, this calls for a very drastic step above and beyond the call of Sigmund Freud. But, uh, Mr. Hastings, put your hands on my shoulders. Ma'am? Lean forward. Closer. Closer. Very close. Mr. Hastings, what are you thinking?
not what I'm getting at. Mr. Hastings, kiss me. I would... I don't suppose you've heard any termites? Well, I... I was just checking your door here for termites. I'm afraid I lost my balance. Silly me. Uh, you see, the termite situation has been shocking. A regular population explosion. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, you know, termites do have very loud heartbeats. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. So, it, be sure to report any termites. <laughs> we must stamp them out. Where were we? You'll think I was kissing you. Oh, but you were kissing me. And speaking of that, kiss me again. But this time properly, on the lips. But, Doctor! We've got to find out if you are cured. Now, do what I tell you. Kiss me. <laughs> Sally, for pity's sake, ring Mr. Philippe right away. Oh, Ernest, you frightened me. Never mind that. I'm telling you to ring Mr. Philippe this second. Oh. Mr. Philippe, do you know it's a quarter to three and there's no one in the place but you and me? Oh, yes. Da 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 da. -da. Sally, this is no time for songs. Just do as I say. I could get fired. Sally. This is an emergency. Now, Mr. Philippe told me not to call him unless the hotel was burning down. And I don't smell any smoke, sweetie. I'm not calling his room at this hour of the morning. Let me at that switchboard. Ernest, no, you can't do this. Stop! You just try it. Stop me. Ernest, stop! Ah! Miss Philippe, I'm sorry to bother you at this late hour, but... Thank you, you have done it again! Yes, I know, but where do you hear this? You hear this! You are fired! Through! Kaput! Fini, you're fired, you hear me? Ernest, he saw us. <laughs> You are fired. Do you hear me? Fired! And don't touch me, what is it? Mr. Philippe, if you'll come with me at this very minute, we can catch them red-handed. That Hastings person and his girlfriend down the hall. Hastings? Are you talking... Are you talking about Ted Hastings? I'm trying to tell you, they're up in her room this very minute. That Letcher and his she-witch. While your poor niece sleeps innocent and unsuspecting, it's up to us to what go... What on earth are you talking about, St. Clair? Please, Mr. Philippe, come with me and see for yourself this salacious exhibition. Better be right. And wait here! Oh. If we can get you to kiss me, in spite of Mother Goose, you'll be cured. You're going to remember about Goldie. You're going to ignore Mother Goose. And you're going to succeed. Get it? Yes, sir. Uh, Ma'am. We must be certain. Concentrate. Think of me as Margie.
Where are you going? Uncle Jacques, I was hoping I wouldn't run into you. You're not going to stop me this time. But what's the use? He simply needs another woman. Wait, Marty, wait. My dear, I'm surprised you didn't do it sooner, the swine. Uncle, what is he talking about? Well, uh, he not. claims to have some, uh, some information about Ted and, and another woman. Mr. Philippe, and on his honeymoon, too. Now, my dear, I'm not easily shocked, but this time I am shocked. Shocked? Another woman. Oh, oh my dear, I, I thought you knew. Oh, Uncle Jacques, he must be mistaken. You know that Ted passes out nearly every time he kisses me. Well, naturally, he's exhausted. Well, it better not be true, I tell you. I if I catch Ted with another woman, I, uh... Monsieur Philippe, I tell you, they're in that room this very minute. Well, I just left him in our suite, and I left him a note, and he was sleeping like a baby. But, but, Mr. Philippe. We better check. St. Clair, lead the way. We follow you. Mr. Hastings? Oh, Margie. I'm not Margie. Oh, dear, I shouldn't have given him the spray. St. Clair. This is the last piece of nonsense I'm taking from you. Understand? All right! Where, where is he? Well, if my calculations are correct, he's deep in her arms at this very moment. Ah! 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 Chachet la pomme! I'll teach you to do this to my niece. Oh! Madam, we do not allow such behavior in this hotel. Uh, Marilyn, has this man been annoying you? Yes, but it's not what you're thinking. Hastings, I'm happy to report to you that your husband is cured of his ailment. Yes, but um, what did he catch in the process? <coughs> Mr. Philippe! Oh. Well... I don't. And to think that you did all this for Margie. Darling, darling, are you still alive? Margie. Baby. Are you all right? I'm fine. Good.
But Cinderella was a perfect fit. And so the prince asked her to marry him. And so she married the prince, and they lived happily ever after. Dear, darling, I'm finished the story. <laughs>